Welcome back to From the Shed and with myself T. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Now, before we get into the content, please go and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as well about everything Chelsea related at the moment. And if you have been under a rock under the last 24 hours, we do have a new sign in at the club who was officially announced earlier on this morning. Zhao Felix has signed on a six month loan deal from Atletico Madrid. 11 million to 16 million fee for the player. 100% of the wages are being paid by Chelsea. There is no option to buy for Zhao Felix. Now, at first of all, on initial thoughts, I was a bit stumped by the fact that there's no option to buy. We're, 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 we're paying 11 million for a, a player for six months. And also, you know, he's, he wasn't top of my priorities in terms of what we needed to bring in over the January window, right back a defensive midfielder um, or a CDM would have been my my top of the list of a, a priority shopping list. But Zhao Felix comes in now. Graham Potter has just held his press conference ahead of the game tomorrow against Fulham at Craven Cottage. And one of the things, notable things that he did mention was Christian Pulisic, who suffered an injury last Thursday against Manchester City, will be out for up to two months, which kind of tells you why this deal has been done and why it's been rushed through as well, it, it feels like it's... Yesterday, I felt I felt it was a panic buy. Today, I feel that it's more reassuring to see that we've already addressed an issue that we know potentially could be an issue had we not brought anyone in to replace Christian Pulisic. So now I'm thinking, is it a good bit of business from Chelsea? Is it that Chelsea have someone else in mind in the summer that they want to bring in and don't want to spend out on a player like Jao Felix for a long period of time? So there's a lot of things now hearing what Graham Potter said, hearing what the board have done over the last 72 hours to bring in Jao Felix. I'm not that disappointed in the deal. I think it's probably a deal that we, in the, in the, in the short term, is filling a gap. Christian Pulisic potentially will miss the rest of the season. You know, he, he's expected back in March, but then you have the re rehabilitation period. You have the chance that he may re reoccur in an injury again in some, some capacity. So that's a very good bit of business. Now, the no option to buy thing, it, it, it did send my head a little bit as well. And then obviously the Chelsea fan base have, have felt that as well. But I think this is a deal that will, in the long term, hopefully benefit us, whether we stick with Jao Felix, whether we have intentions to sign other players in those positions, whether we hope that Christian Pulisic, off, after his injury, comes back and is, is a, a totally different player and, and, and beds into the, into the team with whoever else we're going to bring in in those roles as well. So... There's a lot to consider and to be honest, I think any player that Graham Potter can get into this team now is a bonus for him. This is what we're, we're hoping to see from Graham Potter. Now, based on current performances over the last couple of months, they haven't been good. They've been dire. They've been poor. They've been lacklustrous. They've been disappointing, embarrassing. I could carry on. But this to me tonight, uh, on Thursday, not tonight, I wish it was tonight, but on Thursday... It makes me think that this has to be the turning point of Chelsea's season. We're out of the domestic cups for the first time, both of them in the third round in 34 years. We are definitely not getting Champions League football this season. This has to be a, t a, a massive turning point in the season for Graham Potter. Injuries permitted, yes, Rhys James is out. He's back on the grass. He's, he's, he's training on his own. Ben Chilwell, Ruben Loftus-Cheek have been confirmed in the press conference today has not been too far away from being able to return back to the squad. N'Golo Kante is still injured. Raheem Sterling, a few weeks away. As I've just mentioned, Christian Pulisic, two months out. Mendy, obviously we know he's had a, uh, a, some surgery on his hand as well. So there's a lot of players that are missing. But when you look at the team that we still have, we have a very good team in terms of being able to get a good performance. Now, there's a massive difference between having a brilliant team that will dominate the game and win 3 or 4 nil. We, we're far away from that. But in terms of Fulham, and in terms of the, 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 the game that we're going to be approaching, there has to be a better game plan than what we, we got to see against Manchester City in the FA Cup. I'll take some positives from the Thursday game against Manchester City, but still, but still, there wasn't enough, from, in my opinion, to say that we are where Newcastle are. I watched Newcastle last night against Leicester in the Cup. And you can tell that their players are running through walls. They will, they are, they will go to every last degree of earth to, 
to, to make sure that they get a good performance for Eddie Howe. And we need to be at that point, regardless of the inju- injuries, regardless of who's starting, there has to be more shown on the pitch by these individuals, these players. Some people are saying that the fan base and in, in the Chelsea fan base is saying, you know, these these um, these issues are, have been long term. They've been long, ongoing for, for, you know, more than before Graham Potter, more even before uh, Thomas Tuchel. You know, we're talking maybe Frank Lampard and Sarri. And it's a very good point that some people have picked up. But if you remember, Sarri actually won the Europa League with a squad that was potentially just as bad as this squad with injuries as well. Frank Lampard managed to secure top four. That was his aim, his objective. He had to do a season without signing any players and had issues as well. Thomas Tuchel, COVID season. If you remember back to the Wolves game, I think in uh, December 2020, I think maybe 21, I can't remember, my memory's not the best right now, but if you remember back to that Wolves game, Wolves game at Molyneux, if you remember the bench, yeah, I think it was Sal Niguez, I think it was maybe Mateo Kovacic, Malang Sar, Ross Barkley, and Bettinelli, and Kepa, I think were our, 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 our options off the bench. We had four outfield players on the bench. If you think back to all the injuries we had then as well with Reese James and Ben Chilwell, and we still got to see our team play well. So I understand that there's injuries. I understand that we're not performing at the best because of we, we don't have creativity in the midfield. Listen, I'm 100% behind all the Chelsea fans that are saying that. But at the same time as well, go and watch Newcastle and the way that they played. Go and see Longstaff and Dan Byrne and Kieran Trippier and all those players, Almiron, Joe Linton, all those players running through the wall for Eddie Howe. This is what we need at Chelsea. And is that a player issue or is it a manager issue? I'm going to say it's both. But the manager has to get the best out of this team, regardless of who starts tomorrow, regardless of who comes in. He has to get the best out of the team. If we lose against Fulham, our next game is Crystal Palace. If we lose those two games, we end up potentially going into the bottom half of the table with the likes of Aston Villa, Leeds, Leicester, Nottingham Forest, all searching for points to get away from the relegation drop as well. So there's going to be a mentality issue, I think, even more so if we do lose those games and go into the games in the bottom half of the table to go and play Liverpool on the 21st of January in the bottom half of the table. It's a massive concern. So I'm not expecting a Barcelona performance tomorrow night. I'm not even expecting a Newcastle performance tomorrow night, the way that they're playing at the moment, or United I'm, I'm, I just need to see more from this squad, more from these players in the next couple of games to, to, to make me believe that Graham Potter can turn this season around and, and hopefully get something out of it. Because at the moment, I don't see any, any daylight in this team. Jao Felix coming in is a really good addition, but I'm sure if you speak to many Chelsea fans, you know, there's talk about Carl Walker-Peters coming in as a right back. A very good option, but we need to get these deals done quick and sharpish because... Yes, we're in the, almost the second week of, of the, the month. We've still got plenty of time in the window, but we want to get these deals done. Very much like we've done with Jao Felix and we've got it done within the you know, 72 hour period. We need to go and do the same for a right back. We need to go and do the same for a, a CDM. We need to bring someone in that can, can do a job and hit the ground running and isn't here for the long term project. Jao Felix clearly isn't one of those players that we will see maybe in the next couple of seasons at Chelsea, but he's here to do a job now for six months. We need to go and get someone else to do that at right back as well. And we need to go and get someone to do that in the midfield. If we can get those 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 areas of the pitch fulfilled, then there's no reason why the injury issue, the injury excuse can be used for Graham Potter because he has enough to adapt to change something with this squad, in my opinion. So we need, to, we need to see the results on the pitch. We also need to bring in a couple more players, but we also need to see more from the manager, in my opinion. Now, talking about lineups, obviously tomorrow's game's crucial. I've gone for a balanced team, in my opinion, that I think is balanced enough to get a performance and get the three points against Fulham. A massive game, West London derby. I've gone for Kepa in goal. I've gone for a back four of Trevor Chalabar, Thiago Silva, Kula Bali and I've retained Lewis Hall at left back. I think he's been really good so far when he's come on. He looks like he's more comfortable playing in that position than Kukareo, who is the most expensive left back in history. He looks more suited to play as a left back. The youngster that was playing Premier League 2 football last season 
He's now probably arguably our most per- important defender on the left side. So I think Lewis Hall has to stay in the team for me. Now, midfield, I've gone for the two of Denis Zakaria and Mateo Kovacic, who for me is a no-brainer to bring Zakaria back into a game where you need to try and retain the ball, possession football. You need to try and do that. And as I keep saying, Jorginho, for me, brilliant player over the years, but when you watch him, the decline is starting already for him. So I think we need to bring in someone who's able to hold on to the ball and get that ball forward. And I think the two of Denis Zakaria and Mateo Kovacic will be able to do that going forward in the in the, in the the role that we need them to do that. I think they have to do that. And if we if we if I see Jorginho on that on that team sheet tomorrow, I will fear the worst. I will fear that we might actually lose the game. Grandpa has to be ruthless when he's making these these tough calls, tough decisions, which we're going to get onto when we get to the forward area roles as well. But he has to make some tough calls. And if Jorginho is not putting in a shift, he's not the man for the job. We have to keep him out of the team. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. So my other three that I've gone for, I've gone for Kai Havertz on the left and Hakim Ziyech on the right, and Numan Zhao Felix in the middle. And I think that's where the balance is going to come. I think if you've got Kai Havertz down at the left side, and you've got Hakim Ziyech, and you've got Zhao Felix in the middle, with a, a, a forward attacking role up for Fafana, for, for, for um, I just can't see how we can go wrong there. Patrick Aubameyang is back in training. He's, he's passed his fitness test. He's available for tomorrow's game. But if I'm all, in all honesty, I wouldn't even trust Aubameyang in the team. I wouldn't even trust Aubameyang t- tomorrow. I don't think he's up to the job to to be able to to get the to get a goal. I don't think his his, his heart's in it. I don't think his mind's in it. I think he's mentally checked out for the season, like many Chelsea fans have. But when you're on that much money, when you're expected to to do a job, you've got to continually do it consistently. And you know, I ask Chelsea fans now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. When was Aubameyang's last decent performance for Chelsea? Is it time to allow someone like Fofana, who's come in, who played? 45 minutes against Manchester City in the FA Cup is it time for him to come in and give him a chance the same way we did with Trevor Chalabar the same way we've, we, we look like we're doing with, with Lewis Hall at the moment is it time for Graham Potter to, to sit some of these players down the Mason Mounts who let's be honest hasn't been good this season sit him down Jorginho I'd even arguably say maybe Koulibaly needs to sit a game out or two but do you, you have to have the balance still. You have to hope that Koulibaly steps up and steps into a, a team. And you have to hope that Trevor Chalaber can cope with playing at the right-back situation without Aspilicueta having to fulfill, fulfill, fulfill that role without Rhys James with his injury. So you have to hope that these players can do it. And they should be able to do it. They should be able to put a performance in. My, my worry is, if we do start with Aspilicueta, if we do put Marco Correa at left-back, if you do start Jorginho in the middle, we're back at square one. And you can bring in, you could bring in an Enzo Fernandez and, and it still won't probably change anything because we're still playing the players around them that aren't good enough. And we're bringing all these players in and we need to give them an opportunity. Jao Felix cannot be on the bench tomorrow. He's been brought in for six months. That tells you that he's here for now. He's not here for next season or the season after. It's a short-term loan. He's, he's got to hit the ground running or it's pointless bringing him in. So all these players that we're talking about that we want to bring in, I don't want to see them on the bench. I don't want to see them playing on the bench. I want to see them in the team and give some of these players that have been coasting and riding along for the past three years, as Chelsea fans keep telling me, to sit this one out, sit on the bench and, and keep it warm. We have to get three points tomorrow. It's a, it's a must-win game. The next two games are crucial. We need to get, pick up some points before we start thinking about going to Dortmund and trying to get a result there in the Champions League. Tomorrow is so crucial in terms of not just the season, but I, I think I question Graham Potter's time at the job. If, if he doesn't win at least one of these next three Premier League games, you, you have to start questioning the manager and some of the players. But ultimately, when we talk about Sackins and, and who leaves first, it's not going to be your Mason Mounts and it's not going to be your Jorginho's or Hakim Ziyech. It's going to be Graham Potter unfortunately, who undeservedly probably doesn't even deserve to lose his job. But when the writing's on the wall and you're not performing well, everyone turns and looks at the manager and it's for the manager to try and get something out of these players and he has to do that tomorrow. Whether we win or we draw, I've gone for a prediction of 2-1. I think we should be able to beat... I mean, the fact I'm saying we should be able to beat Fulham as a Chelsea fan should be alarming enough. But as I say... I think we need to go back to the basics. We need to get the team playing well first. 
and then try and build on performances. And hopefully, Zhao Felix coming in with that new lease of life gives some of these players something to think about in terms of their squad selection. Are they are they guaranteed to start tomorrow night? It needs to give it needs to give some of these these players a wake up call. So I'm going for two one. I'm hoping I'm right. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you would go with in terms of a lineup, and let me know what your score predictions are and who do you think should be the one to lead the line tomorrow? Should it be Fofana? Should it be Kai Havertz? Or should it be Patrick Abamyang? So let me know your thoughts. This has been T Dot. Don't forget to smash that like button and the subscribe button as well before you leave this video. And we'll be back with a match review tomorrow night after the game. Thank you very much for watching.